Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Send Them Off. I'm joined by Devin Reader, as always. I'm Tom Cloutier, and unfortunately, we have to kind of start the show on a somber note. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, which I will, I, I'd be surprised if you don't know by now, but uh, Kobe Bryant, uh, his daughter Gianna, uh, and seven other people were killed in a helicopter accident in California on Sunday. Um, for me, personally, Kobe was a huge influence and in why I, outside of obviously, the, you know, here we're here to talk about soccer, football, whatever you want to call it. Uh, um, but outside of that, for me, I became a basketball fan. I'm a Lakers fan um, because of Kobe Bryant. So for, you know, for me, for me, it was a, it was a pretty big loss. As much as it's a big loss for really the sports world and it's just the world in general, um, he touched so many people in so many different ways. Um, but also... I guess in more relation to our show, Kobe mm-hmm. was also a great ambassador for the game of soccer. And uh, say he was a huge Barcelona and AC Milan fan, uh, fan of AC from when he lived in Italy. Um, he also more recently became a Spurs fan uh, for the Premier League. And, you know, for somebody who is such a great ambassador to sports other than his own, because you see a lot of time, you know, and this isn't a knock on most people, but Kobe Bryant wasn't most people. So, you know, you, you see most athletes won't go out of their way to become an ambassador of a sport that they don't necessarily play. Uh, and that spoke volumes to what it, like what Kobe Bryant, who, like who Kobe Bryant was as a person. He was, you know, doing the most he could at any given point, you know, the Mamba mentality. So, um, as, as I say, for me, it was a, you know, a pretty, pretty big loss um you know of course it's huge for the rest world and our, our thoughts and love out to it you know everyone involved all the families um involved not just I say not just vanessa and the girls and the rest of the brian family but all, all the bigger family and anything in particular you want to um, speak on not really i feel like that was really well done i don't want to add anything more for the sake of being redundant or disgracing it that's what that was also <laughs> But um, now, uh, let's, 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 I mean, Kobe wouldn't want us to be sad too long. So let's, let's move, I'll say, let's move forth before I start crying on the show. Okay. Uh, but, uh, so let's move on. We're, we're different episode today, uh, not just in the intro, but uh, in general, um, as it's transfer deadline day tomorrow. Uh, the January window usually isn't too uh, interesting, but the last week has been it, pretty interesting. Pretty good, yeah. yeah pretty interesting. <laughs> a bit more of a FIFA January window than the normal one. Um, but so we have some done deals to talk about. Let's get to those first. Uh, arguably the biggest one of the window. Um, Erickson has finally left um, Tottenham Hotspur after really wanting to leave for a year and a half now, if we're yeah. being honest. But very much um, picking up a move in the past. A uh, few months, the, he ended up moving to Inter Milan, as it seems everyone is going to Inter Milan right now. To revive their careers. To, yeah. I mean, Ashley Young had got, a, got an assist. Yeah, and good on them. Ashley Young moved as well. I mean, not as big of a one. We're not going to have to break down that move. Yeah. It's pretty simple. But uh, 20 million uh, euros. I think they're fortunate to get 20 million for him yeah, at this say, stage because his contract say. was expiring in six months. Right. So better to very much the better to let him go for 20 million than to let him go for free kind mm-hmm. of deal here. Uh, that's, that's a steal for Inter if you think yeah. about. It. Obviously, they would have liked to get him for free in you know the summer, but they're fighting with uh, with Juventus right now, so they need the help now. Um, and of course, you know Ericsson's a 70 million dollar. Uh, seven million million euro player probably, mm-hmm. in in today's market. So, Devin, do you think was was a good business for both teams, and what impact do you think he'll have on Inter moving forward? Uh, first of all, yes, I think it was good business for both teams. Um, obviously, I I think for Tottenham, like keeping a player around that is going that, that so apparently does not want to be there, is taxing on him and everyone else around him and and he's a professional and he has like done his best i think to like work through that but the reality is he it's like getting up every day and hating your job at that point like you're not going to perform at the same level as someone who loves what they're doing right and so i think it was time to let him go i think it was good that they finally like let him go and a bid came in because people were willing to pay for him now but the fact they got 20 million out of him um 
is is fortunate enough for them because I think it would have been really easy for people to just go, you know, it's only because of the circumstances that Juventus is or like Inter finds themselves in because they're pushing for the title along with like battling with Juventus that they had to come for him right now. I think, um, otherwise they could have just waited till the summer. But um, that aside, I think twenty million for a player like Ericsson on Inter side is really good. I think they've done a lot of really smart investing. They've bought players who are good but have not performed well for their club. And it's really shown that these players are good players. They just weren't where they needed to be, I think. So. Yeah, and I, I think Erickson, we, we've seen, even in him not performing at his best in the past you know, year or so, mm-hmm. but we've seen flashes. The flashes of brilliance we used to see on, a, a, on the daily. Mm-hmm. And um, Erickson is very, still a very talented player, still quite young. I think, I think it's about time for him to leave Tottenham, anyways. In terms of not just that he wanted to leave, but it just felt like, you know, the emergence of Deli Alley in the last couple of seasons, and you know, Mora on the outside. They want Deli Alley to be more central. You're forcing Erickson out of his natural position and into the left side. It felt, it felt like maybe he had been, no, he wasn't no, he was no longer the first choice player. Uh, in the position that he needed to be. He was still on the team sheet every week, but, you know, you're not using him at, at his best position, and I think there's a real chance, you know, he gets that, you know, role in Inter. You, know, you yeah. think about it, you could have a, a team now with Erickson in behind, you know, Lautaro Martinez and Lukaku, Lukaku with possibly if he, you know, is not injured every 30 seconds, Alexis Sanchez – out on one side, and if Alexis Sanchez plays like Alexis Sanchez can, that, that could be disgusting, for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know Palatano has now been loaned out for the rest of the year to Napoli from Inter because, you know, kind of getting forced out by yeah. uh, Erickson coming in. But there's still plenty of depth there. They're essentially replacing players like possibly Vicino and, you know, Borgia Valero, who are quality, you know, solid players with a player that is great to world class on on his day mm-hmm. uh, for twenty million, which you know yeah. is less than I'm pretty sure we paid for Daniel James. Yeah. So I mean, are you implying that Daniel James hasn't been one of your best players? No, he year? has been one of our best players. <laughs> but when Daniel James is one of our best players, that's a different sign. Yeah. Um, no, but but the point is, you know, this is somebody who has shown to have world class potential and you know brilliance at times, and you know you're getting him cheaper than you can get a young winger in today's market. Mm-hmm. Um, that said, we, well, let's move on to, I guess, the club of Daniel James. Yeah. Uh, and the probably the biggest deal of the window. Bruno Fernandes finally on his way to Manchester United. Finally signs for Manchester United after six months of rumor of this happening. Uh, and at one point, it was going to be, no, he's going to Spurs instead. Then two days ago, Barcelona jumped in with a plan to loan him immediately to Valencia in order to get Rodrigo complicated yeah and also i can understand why you know fernandez came out and said the premier league was always his choice which to me sounded like well yes he was looking at premier league teams that's probably true but also very much sounded like i'd rather not be loaned out immediately yeah yeah who really wants to be signed by a club to immediately be loaned out them yeah if you want to go play for one of the biggest clubs in the world he'd rather go to one of the biggest clubs in the world and play yes um 80 million, potential to be 80 million. I believe it's 55. Plus 25 plus, bonus. Yeah, plus like 15 and very easy to get bonuses, 10 and other bonuses. Yeah, Bonuses upon bonuses in order to make this deal to go th- deal go through. Devin, uh, same same sort of questions that I'll probably be asking for most of these. Good business, yes or no, on uh, for either team here. And w- what can Bruno do to help, you know, man, you ascend to the level that they should be at? So, first of all, I think this is a type of player that uh, United desperately need. Um, I think that's fair. It's not like a center back like we've been discussing for a really long time. But at times, I think this year, their their defense has actually been improved. Lindelof has looked decent at times. He's actually, I think Lindelof's your best defender. That that aside. He's played better than Harry Maguire this year. uh, That aside, I do think Bruno Fernandes, 80 million, I think is just obviously with possible bonuses is a good sum for a player of this assumed caliber however i can't personally speak on this because because he played for sporting right i never got to don't exactly get the chance to watch 
personally the, seen him the Liga play. Portuguesa that often. But based <laughs> on uh, clout alone, it seems that he was a uh, highly regarded um, number number nine. No, ten. Number, number ten. 10 yeah. Number ten. And, and I was going to say, he's, I got my positions wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he's been on menu and really all the big clubs boards for a while now. Uh, he has shown – I've seen, of course, what I can see for the most part is highlights and stuff, but I, he's played in some Champions League games and Europa League games with Sporting. So he's a very he, – he very much is the type of player that you expect to be at a big club already. Mm-hmm. Uh, he shows that poise that you expect from players at big clubs. It's a – you know, we'll have to see how that, how that will translate to the Premier League where – if you're like Wolves, you have a lot of success with getting Portuguese and Portuguese Ugh. league players in. But, you know, some of the problems of a team like Newcastle over the last really five to ten years has been signing players unaccustomed to the Premier League and them not translating well to the league. So we, of course, world-class players can be world-class players. And I believe Bruno has the ability to get to that point. I don't, he's a very good player now, but I think he very much is someone who has – the building blocks of becoming a world-class player. And if he gets to that, uh, he's going to have to show that he can do it in the Premier League to get to that point. Now, you know, he's at a club in Manchester United where he steps onto the pitch and presuming Pogba's hurt as he usually is, he's probably their best player. Quite frankly, he's probably Man United's best player right now. Um, Again, provided he plays as well as he... uh, Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. But... Mm -hmm. You know, he steps into a uh, – I think this is a great place for him to be. You know, Manchester United is a big club. He'll be the – like one of the – he'll, well, he'll be one of the first names on the team sheet. Right. He'll be the first name on the team <laughs> sheet. Prob- well, against Wolves this weekend, he will be the first name on the team sheet, uh, which is also a great team for him to play against. But um, A counterattacking team where he'll, he'll get to see the ball. And, and not to mention a, a team full of players that he's played against because they're – you know, or with because yeah. you know half of their team is Portuguese, yeah. so he'll know the players he's playing against, which is, will be a nice little transition into the league. Uh, but of course, we know the Premier League has a reputation of being physical, being different to most European leagues and the European style. So whether you can translate to that, don't know. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. Um, what do you think? What, what What do you think, Man U? Obviously, there's more to come this year. But what do you think this says about Man U going forward and? Potentially, the quote unquote rebuild of Manchester United. Um, well, I think it shows that they are willing. Eighty million is a large sum, and for a club like Man United, like obviously they have it. But the fact that they're willing to spend it, and in this case, spend it, I think on a like worthwhile investment, says a lot. Like As opposed I, to fifty-two million for Fred, although he has been better this year. Yeah. Not fifty-two uh, million better, but, but this, <laughs> but this is this is a player where, like, when you know, you getting this player, the expectation surrounding this is he's going to be the guy. Whereas whenever they bought players previously, they were like, eh, like he'll he'll be a squad player, like he'll be in and around, he might help out. This is this will be the guy. This is a guy that's expected to. Ha- There's a lot of weight on his shoulders, but this is a guy that is expected to perform really, really well. And so I think. Going for players like this instead of going for like a like patching like a leak and just like replacing the whole thing like actually fixing the problem that's causing the leak I think is this this is more of a, that approach. I was saying the last player with this much hype that man you bought from uh, from Portugal or from Sporting for that matter uh, turned out pretty okay. Not saying not saying that that's going to happen, but I mean <laughs> Manchester United apparently loves Sporting. Yeah, you know Nani Ronaldo. Uh, even Marcus Rojo, who hilariously is now leaving the club on yeah. loan for the rest of the season uh, at the other end of the steal, but um, out back back home to Argentina. But um, sporting players have turned out pretty well at Manchester United, so let's, we can, I can well at least I can only hope that turns out you know for the better this time. Uh, moving on to Devin, just say it because we've you know, butchered this nine times today. Bergvine. Bergvine. I always thought it was Bergwin. I I, I apologize there, to the Dutch. There, well, no, nah, I mean, <laughs> I told you there was a video of him saying it. They had him in an interview, like one of the first things he did when he came to the club. It's on Twitter, and he was like, "Oh, how, they were like, how do you say your name?" He's like, "Well, in Dutch." And he, I can't even like begin. <laughs> he said it in Dutch. Dutch is a weird, like, is a strange language that I don't know the phonetics for. Um, and then he's like in English, it's like Bergwin. And so, like, we have definitive proof of how to say his name. It's Bergvon. I always thought it was Bergwin. I'm pretty sure they say Bergwin on FIFA. Yeah. But, you know, 
to be fair, Barton Tyler is not the go-to uh, <laughs> guy for pronunciations. But anyways, Bergvine <laughs> is uh, now a Tottenham Hotspur player. Uh, after a 30 million move, which is a pretty good business. Yeah, he's uh, a I really feel. young winger. A young Dutch Promising. winger from PSV, I believe. PSV. Um, yeah, Eindhoven. And I was going to say, he's, he's been, and he's really been proving himself for like three, four years now. Like, yeah. And when I like, heard this, I was like, he's like, still at PSV. He's like, like I presumed he had moved to like Dortmund or something yeah, already. And he's like 22, 23, I'm right, pretty and, sure. Uh, I, I know, I, I was talking to one of my uh, fans who's a uh, one of my friends who's a Spurs fan. <laughs> one of your fans. One of my fans. <laughs> All one of them. Um, no, but one of, my, <laughs> one of my friends who's a Spurs fan, uh, not Sean this time, but uh, another one who was, you know, we we're, were talking about this and the Bruno Fernandez deal, and I was like, it's the biggest thing for me is it's nice to have Tottenham sign a natural winger as opposed to they have Lucas Mora, and really that's it. Yeah, they do not have a lot of natural wingers. So this will be Son very plays good out wide, but he's more of a right. center forward. Son has been a uh, you know center forward, a left mid, a left, left wing, mid, a winger, a cam. Yeah, probably played CDM at one point for Leverkusen, but uh, you know someone who is just an out and out winger with is absolutely rapid. Which when you were playing, you know Mourinho likes to just sit back and then all of a sudden bomb it down the pitch. So. You've got a guy out there who can outpace quality. most of the people in. Yeah, he's got quality as so well. Most of the people in the Premier League have then actually put the ball in the net and you know break, beat a guy one on one. That will open up, you know, the doors for the this attack, especially without Harry Kane there right now. Yeah, I think this is a really good um, bit of business by Tottenham. I think the fact that Tottenham has bought so many players in the past like year means that they're not allowed to buy anyone for the next three just to make <laughs> up for it. But I say, and also uh, with going off of that, the low Celso deal, he's been permanently purchased. That's true. That was also that's I was yes. also really impressed with that. I think that's a good move for them, right. especially. Obviously, uh, it was announced immediately following Ericsson's like departure, yeah. so a little bit of tension there. Well, you know, we'll leave that up to. Well, some, I mean, you got to. You might, yeah. as well, you might as well confirm the replacement who was already there. Yeah. Um, but I think it's good. He, he's looked really good for them. He's a really good player. I think having someone who is already there at the club who has kind of shown that he's a good player to just immediately, now he's ready to step into that role fully, I think that's a really good move. I think all of this has actually been pretty well done by Tottenham. They've obviously had a really rough year losing Pochettino uh, and everything. But I think they've tried to go about this in a way that – Makes sense, at least. Yeah, I, I quite frankly, this this might be surprising. I think this was the best bit of business, business done in the Premier League so far this window, unless you know something dramatic well, I, happens I think, in the next twenty four hours. Well, I think the thirty million is is like a really yeah. really good sign. I'm saying that's why it's obviously yeah. the biggest the biggest signing. Is, yeah, you know, Fernandez in terms of you know talent and um, potential star power, but for me, Bergwin or. Berg, Bergvine, I still want to call him Berg, Bergvine, but Bergvine for, you know, 30 million is a fantastic deal. Again, we're, we're talking about, I keep going back to, but, you know, that's slightly more, if not le maybe less. I can't remember if I've yeah. been the Daniel James deal. And Daniel James has looked very good for Manchester United, but he still does not have the, you know, quality that Bergvine possesses. Um, so I think this is a good bit of deal, uh, or good bit of business and a good deal for Tottenham. And, uh, and of course, for PSV, they, their hands are are kind of tied. Yeah, you know, thirty million to them is they can fund the club for another four years. So, <laughs> right, and I'm not saying they're like you know running out of money or yeah. anything like that. But to to well, them, they've, they've exactly. just exported two incredibly good wingers in the past year. Right, I was saying, and to them, they, they just it's Keep no producing. surprise that yeah. with the exception of maybe Ajax, but even then, we've seen you know their best players leave now too. Um, the the Dutch league is very much a Selling league, yeah. Put it that way. They well, don't have uh, the money. Selling, to keep people but the, the player development. They do an amazing yeah. job developing it's the players. Best it's the best country in the world for player development. Quite frankly, yeah. it really is. Um, Although you could argue that Dortmund is another player for really good uh, youth development. And on that note, on see that what note, I did. Look at that. Yeah, He's yeah. did my transition for me. What a nice lad. You're welcome. Uh, but the, the you know the. Maybe the most surprising at the time, and put you know, uh, another, well, the, one of the earliest. Yeah, too. One, and also one of the earliest. As I say, this is not a this is not the shocking move in the last week. This is the you know first one we've got that happened a while ago because it happened on like the third of January. But uh, uh, Erling Holland to Dortmund, 
Um, he's already started fantastically, so I guess, yes, Devin, yeah. this has been a good deal. <laughs> um, but we've talked before, and the thing I really want to talk about, because we started talking about it a little bit before we came on the show, but I want, I want to get you know more of your thoughts on this. He has a 63, I believe, million, either euro or pound. Uh, excuse me, I cannot remember. Um, Ruiz Clause in his Dortmund contract, which very much means next year someone could come – Come a knocking, you know. Yeah. Think about the likes of Real Madrid, even Man U, who are interested in him. I don't think Barcelona would be in the market, but Luis Suarez is not as young as he used to be. Um, what are, What do you think? A are the chances of a team triggering that release clause? Like a hundred percent. Like a hundred percent. Yeah, I I really don't see any scenario in which someone doesn't trigger the release clause. But I was discussing with you earlier. I don't think they should do it. I think I mean, he's like 19, right? He's 19? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Like, give him two years to, to be, like, 21. Give him a few years of, like, develop a few – a season and a half to develop at Dortmund. Let them work with him. Let him play some uh, Bundesliga, like, football, which is very good for finishing and in combination play, especially at Dortmund. He'll learn how to – his movement will improve. His finishing will improve. Just give him a little bit more time so that he can get a bigger repertoire uh, so that he can become an even better striker. Because one thing that he has that's so rare is he's a big guy with a lot of speed. And and a lot of ball control. A lot, yeah, good. like he's he just, a very good, say, technical, quick, like right. precise player. And, and having all those attributes is really – supposed to be that player, but he can't you yeah. know, keep a hold of the football. And he, you know – but this is the time where you want players to develop their technical skill even further, to kind of mature a little bit. Maybe he can get even a little bit more strength or any stuff like that. So that when eventually when he goes to a big club, because the next club that buys him, he's going to be the guy. The guy. Yeah, he's going to be the guy. And I think trying to force someone into being the guy too early doesn't work. Like even Messi, when he started out, wasn't the guy. Like he was really, really good. But for those first few seasons, he had that midfield. Right. And Ronaldinho was even still there for the one or two or whatever it was. Now, I'll say the only, the only argument against this I, I, I have, and I would like to see that, yeah. mostly because I'd like to see the Bundesliga as, another, as a great, another great league for you know, developing players. But think about it. If you're these big clubs. You got to have them. That's you, why I said it's 100%. You can't, yeah. you can't let another him person sit get and another team get there yeah. first. And, of course, it's going to be like a year before that happens anyway. So he'll have time to develop. Yeah. But also, you know, he's 19. Yeah, he's only 19, but Mbappe was only 19 at the World Cup. I'm not saying he's <sighs> Mbappe level, but people are already saying, could Holland and Mbappe be the, you know. The next Ronaldo me- Messi. Ronaldo Messi. And the answer is no. Mbappe would wipe the floor of him. Sorry, early. <laughs> I don't – you're not there. Yeah. But, you know, this is a kid who I, – I say kid because he's younger than me, but, you know, he's 19. He's still in a, a – grown adult yeah but this is a 19 year old who has scored a hat trick in the champions league already Mm -hmm. has scored a hat trick in the bundesliga with his first three shots clearly he's shown that he can do it when it matters he he shows he is not you know succumb to the pressure yeah you know those are huge pressure building moments and he smashed it out the park those are the best games yeah i just i guess there's just part of me that i've seen so many moves where they the, the teams buy the, the odegaards of the yeah world. where they buy the player because he's to the next big, Norwegian. yeah he's the next big guy and then they just you just watch him wither away at these clubs and then they go somewhere else and they get a little bit of a revival but i'm just afraid that they'll take a really promising talent and pluck it off the vine before it's ripe and right and it'll and cause it to not be of any use. I was say, yeah. And to me, it, it's hard because you look at teams that would be in the market. You look at your Real Madrid. So you look at the big clubs. Real Madrid, Benzema is not the guy. Yeah. Benzema is not the guy. He's a very good player. He's doing very well this year, actually. He's having a bit of a resurgent year after a couple, you know, good but not great years. But Kareem Benzema is not going to lead your team for the next five, ten years. There, That's a team that needs a – Long-term, yeah. great quality striker. You look and they, at, well, they've recently even, bought Jovic, which was supposed right. to be that guy, guy but he's but, not working out. Right. So, like, and th- you have a team in Barcelona who Luis Suarez is a world-class striker, but yeah. how, you know, how much longer? Yeah. You look at a place, 
like Old Trafford and Manchester United. They're currently shopping for strikers now. They they have a whole like build, and they're trying to build a younger up and coming team. That that to me that would be the if a team is going to do it, Manchester United would be I think the best option, especially if Ole's still there because you have another Norwegian. He said he'd love to play for Ole, but. If it, you know, even Bayern Munich across, you know, yeah. a- across the country. Yeah, Lewandowski's there, but I feel like he would be a fantastic complement to Lua as Lua begins to age because Lua's probably not going anywhere. Yeah. I just can't imagine having uh, Holland and Lewandowski on the same team. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I know. I, I, I just cried a little yeah. for anyone who likes defense. But So, wait. Actually, I say this. Let's just think about this. Lewandowski, Holland. Ten goals in 18 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's possible? There you go. That's the next record for you guys. Uh, but let's move on to some rumors. So um, we have th- this one that I, I, I'll be honest, I saw it just only, you know, fairly recently. Potential of Dries Mertens going to Chelsea. Uh, you know, I heard this and I was like, I don't like it. But then I saw the price tag and I was like, well, I guess it couldn't hurt. They were like, it's going to be over. Like the rumor was it's got to be over five million. And so like for most people, you hear five million. Like, like, oh, that's a lot of money. But like five million in this transfer market, it's like nothing. And Dries Mertens is without a doubt a very good. Although you could attacking. buy like two and a half Ashley Youngs with that money. But three and a half Ashley Youngs. Excuse me. I would argue that Dries Mertens <laughs> is worth ten and a half. Oh no, absolutely. Ashley Young's if he played if his Ashley Young as he was leaving United a few months <laughs> ago. Absolutely. Um but yeah, so it, I guess it wouldn't hurt to have him because it's assumed that Giroud is out and on his way um, possibly tomorrow. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Or literally my phone could have buzzed. But. Um yeah, <laughs> Tammy Tammy Abraham is young but he's out injured right now and they're kind of showing a, a problem with that. Um William is rumored to move to Barcelona, actually, on top of uh, – I'm trying to think of the other Brazilian that they were thinking about getting. I have no idea who you're It might have been recalling – it might have been recalling Coutinho. Oh, Richarlison? No, Richarlison. When they it. offered Everton yeah. $100 million and Everton oh, said no. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I That's have, what we should have talked about. Uh, yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> so we're going to – we're just going to take a we're quick – we're going to go to that real yeah. quick. So, Barcelona offered – 85 million pounds? 85 yeah, million I think pounds? Yeah, like 100 million dollars. Yeah, for Richarlison. Now, Richarlison is a good player. I think in today's market, 40, 45, maybe even, even 50. I would just say even 60. I would is say. like like you'd be like, "You know what? Depends that, how much you stake yeah, on his future." Yeah, if you want to spend that money and you're a club, like I think there are better ways to spend that money, but that's like your prerogative. <laughs> the fact that you were like, "Yeah, we're going to slap 85 million on the table." And then Everton of all clubs right. who's been struggling looked at that and was just nah. like, "Nah." And just we're like, "No, we're not no deal." Like I mean, you cannot get more money than that for that no, player. No, and I, I credit the loyalty and faith in a player. But wow, at some Ancelotti has some stones to put it lightly there. Um, that or he's just stupid. I, I, I uh, Ancelotti must see something in him. That's yeah. the only reason I can think. Well, it's kind of funny he is you their say best that. Player pretty much. But. Yeah, it is funny you say that though because I feel like the past few managers uh, that have have been there have really they've all seen something with Richarlison. I right. feel like for some reason. When we watch him, like he's good and he gets goals occasionally, but there must be something about the way when that he's he on can. His, when he's on his day, he's one of the best in the Prem quite frankly. I can only imagine there's something about him in like tactical adapting that just make managers love him. There must be some part of his game that's really versatile for managers to toy with. I don't I don't fully understand. I'm not gonna pretend I do and I'm not gonna pretend <laughs> it's not there. I'm just saying it feels like the managers put a lot of faith in him. Pretty consistently. Right. So it, it's kind of like one of those things where it's like there is something because it's happened repeatedly. Right. So, And obviously Barcelona had to see something. Yeah. Um, now, all I'm going to say on the matter of Mertens to Chelsea is, quite frankly, that it, it seems like kind of a move of why? Yeah. Like, yeah, he'd be nice to have around, but it also doesn't really fit Chelsea to me. Like this whole rebuild of Chelsea, the yeah. whole – Youth. What? Yeah, youth. Lampard. To, yeah. yeah, Lampard's going to teach these guys how to do this. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, moving on to the next one. This is – it's always a faint rumor now ever since, you know, the whole 
Wales golf than uh, Real Madrid, Real Madrid, Madrid thing happened in that order. Uh, Bale returning to Tottenham. I There's, think this no. window absolutely not going to happen. Yeah. They've spent too much money already. They've spent too much money for like three windows. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, they did save up for three windows, not signing uh, that's, anyone. That's fair. <laughs> but um, I just I feel like this is a little pointless. Like I don't fully like he's a good player, but you just bought this young winger. Right. Like, I feel like this, it, it feels like a regression. If you're trying to be, if you're Tottenham, you're trying to move forward. And I feel like this is almost like, a, a step it, it would feel like going backwards. You're bringing back a player that you already got rid right. of. You know, this would have made sense two years ago to me. Yeah. Not now. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, whoever, obviously, you know, Spurs fans would be delighted to have bail back, but it's good. I it would, I think it would cost them too much money either in straight up, Cash wages or wages. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it would be worth it at this point in time. Uh, another rumor is I talked before of oh United. God. United's looking into strikers. The names I've heard are quite frankly dumb. If I'm going to be honest, if I'm going to be frank here, quite frankly dumb. So I, if, I think you mispronounced the word garbage. Okay, that works too. Uh, if we if we had the cards, I'd be giving this a red. Carlos Tevez or Slamani to Manchester United. Okay, why? I mean, I know we need a striker, especially since Rashford's gone for a while. Yeah, but, like, to bring back Tevez and then <laughs> Slomani. I'd like a striker Slimani, not pl- who, who was didn't play at, in 94. Well, Slomani was at Leicester. Yeah. And did jack Nothing. all. <laughs> like, what, what, why is that who you're bringing yeah, no, back? Yeah, I was saying, quite frankly, I saw this. I, it was so appalling, I decided to put it on the show. It's pretty yeah, much it. Yeah, I, yeah, I looked at this and I was like, hilarious. Why? First of all, I would take Tevez before Slomani. If I'm being honest, I like would take 40? a 90 year old Tevez before Slomani. Realistically, isn't he like 30s? High put, 30s? I, yeah, he is high 30s. Yes. He's like 37. That's why, that's why I said I don't want a player who's played in 1994. Yeah. But yeah. So, you know, if this happens, we can always, you know, boot up FIFA 10 and, you know, play with the same team again. But <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, uh, that one seemed really dumb to me. So, uh, lastly, though, to the close out the show, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pitch to you the question What is the deal that we've Possibly you've heard a rumor of, or if you know, if you want to go full on fantasy, what's the deal you'd most like to see happen in the next two days? Day and a half, right? Uh, well, I, I, I had thought that um, Tottenham was looking at Piatek, uh, but he seems to be leaving AC Milan to go to Ertha, I believe, Sounds Ertha right. Berlin. Uh, and I don't know if that's 100% confirmed. These things always get a little shady. Right. Um, I go with when the club has a picture of him signing the contract and holding up the jersey, it's confirmed. No, nah, I don't believe it till he's on the pitch. <laughs> um, it's Photoshop. Holy yeah. Wasn't, holy wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, gosh. Who would I like to see? Uh, well, I really put him on the spot here. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm just thinking about all the, all the players. And We've got, like, you know, Giroud is – Thinking about leaving someone. Do you want, want, do you want Giroud to Tottenham? No. That's mine. Giroud to Tottenham. Oh, yeah. I, I, I want to see Giroud. I want to see that I beautiful see him play. man. Oh. No, yeah. Mr. GQ himself, Olivier yeah, Giroud. Yeah, like, how could you take that away from us? <laughs> um, realistically, though, uh, yeah, I really... There's no... See, what? the problem, the problem is, with is me... Is Swansea is, looking at anyone? You want Swansea no, to bring somebody to in? No, we're about to sell IU um, because his wages are too high. And his wages were too high four years ago. Yeah, but his wages <laughs> are too high now especially, and he's scoring, so it's only time to ship him off. Right. That's how this is Swansea right. way. Right. You take your leading goal scorer, and you sell them for profit. And of then, course. And then when you don't get promoted... You wonder why. You wonder <laughs> why. That's how it goes. It's been like that for two years. Yeah. Any, or three years, actually. Three years, yeah. three years. Newcastle made it back already. Yeah. Um, so, Heck, yeah. Villa I, made it back already. <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel like for me, uh, I like watching young players stick with a certain club. And so anytime it's like rumored they're transferring, I'm like, no, like, don't do it. I want to, <laughs> I, I like want to see what they can do. But also I realize that some people need a bigger stage. Right, and, like, like, like our pal Steven. Yeah. Steven, uh, what is it? I keep forgetting. Bergvine. Bergvine. I see. I think I think W is V, and I think just, German. Just but. just just break it off at the G. It's just there you go. Berg, Berg Bergvine. Berg, Vine. Yeah, I don't do that. All right. I, I, I can't do that. My brain don't think like that. All right. I apologize, Steven. Oh. Uh, you know, I've heard Jack Grealish 
possibly going places. Um, but he's been in the Premier League this season and hasn't proven anything. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, he's been he's been pretty good. He's been one of Villa's best players. I think if they get if they go down, then he's he'll definitely somewhere. gone. Yeah, he's right. definitely gone. But but that happened um, the last time he went down too. They went the last time they went down. Grealish was there too, and we all thought he was going to move. So yeah, who knows? Uh, I don't know. So it is it is difficult for me to like imagine um, a certain player leaving or going somewhere. Um, I mean, Ibrahimovic already went back to AC Milan. Like that was, <laughs> that was insane. Anyway, uh, what about you, Tom? Do you have anything that you would really uh, well, like I, to see? I said Giroud to Tottenham. Yeah, Giroud to Tottenham. Uh, mostly for for two reasons. One, I feel like it's be the type of thing to irritate Sean. Uh, so I'm going to be straight up with that. I uh, hope you're watching, Sean. But uh, the the other thing is, I think that's a very good. Like Mourinho move, in, yeah, yeah, and fill in for Harry Kane's gone. You know, that's fair. He's I a actually... similar player to Harry Kane. He's not Harry Kane ability anymore, but he's, <laughs> but he is a you know he's a similar type only, only player because Harry, Harry Kane, Kane got better though. Right, yeah. Giroud never declines. <laughs> he's on a constant. He ages like fine wine. Yeah, but um, yeah, Giroud, he's a similar type of player to Harry Kane, especially with Bergvine coming in. You know. It, that could be an interesting He's thing. He's very good at linking. He wouldn't up be player. very expensive. He yeah. needs to leave Chelsea if he wants to actually play football. And I think this is a great time. You could, you know, sign him on a even if they take him on loan for the rest of the year. But if they signed him for, you know, an eighteen month contract, there you go, you have him and you probably move him on next year to Gateshead. I don't know. Yeah. I, you know what? <laughs> I'm with it. I can I can get behind that one. That's what right. I would like to see. So after after this very odd show, well, maybe 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 a big deal will happen, and we'll have to talk about it, it next week. I mean, week. if if it happens, we'll just pull this picture up, and a bunch of confetti will fall. Right. Like PowerPoint yeah. Presentation. So yeah. so when Giroux is on Tottenham next week, you know, you'll have me to thank for it's, for the it, prior you knowledge. You heard it here first. Yeah, you heard it here first. And totally not any rumors that I've read before, but that's all right. That is all for us this week. We will see you again next week, and uh, we'll have some some. Uh, Interesting. Well, presumably new development. Let's say new development at the same time. We'll have some. We'll have an interesting game at least in City and Tottenham to talk about. So that'll be, yeah. that'll be fun. But we'll see you next time.